Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dianchronic, you here on this Destiny 2 video and today we're going to be taking a look at one of my new favorite Titan Stasis builds in PvP. Now there are a lot of pieces of these Stasis subclass that we are still learning about and how they fit in with the rest of our possible loadouts, this is just a first look of something that I feel works well. This build focuses on the fast and long slide for speed and shattering and the wall grenade for shattering with your slides. Combine this with multiple fragment stats and mods to improve these things, and you've got yourself a very simple premise, but a very effective one. TLDR, throw a grenade, slide through it, kill everyone around you. And of course, as always, the gameplay and the creation of this build is thanks to my buddy Zoomzy. You can find a link to his Twitch in the description down below, and of course, as you can see on screen right now, he's really good, so go check him out. Moving on, let's talk about the specs of this build. I'll go in more detail about the certain choices and what certain things do later on in gameplay. For the class and subclass, we have the Titan Stasis Behemoth. For the aspects, there's only two of them, so Cryoclasm and Tectonic Harvest. For the fragments, shards, hedrons, and fissures are working very well with this build. I'll talk more about what these do later. And the rest of it is going to be the Glacier Grenade, which is the Wall Grenade, Shiver Strike, Tower Barricade, and Strafe Lift. For my weapon choice, honestly, there are a lot of different weapons that are doing very well in the meta right now. We got Scout Rifles, Pulse Rifles, Hand Cannons, Sidearms even. There's so many different weapons that work right now, it's honestly up to you. My particular choice is going to be Mida Multi-Tool, Felwinter's Lie, and Interference 6. And again, there are a lot of different things you can use on screen right now. You can see the full list of my current recommendations. One particular point I would mention is that currently shotguns are going to be the preferred option for special these days as snipers did get their aim assistance nerf and a lot of things have much longer range to deal with those pulse rifles, scout rifles, and high range hand cannons. Oftentimes a shotgun is the best answer. Up next, let's talk about the armor mods, oftentimes the most sophisticated and important part of any build. It's what makes the build strong. On screen right now, you can see how I built my particular build. I optimized it as much as I possibly could, but obviously you can have your own configuration. Obviously, you'll have your own set of stats and distribution. Just make your build make sense. The main idea of the armor mods is to improve your grenade, recovery, scout rifle, and shotgun. My particular exotic choice is Dune Marchers, not only the fact that it is very strong for PvP Titans these days, it's really great to increase your speed, get extra damage on your melee hits, which your charge melee ability almost one-shots enemies, helps finish those off, and it also activates during the super's light attack. The scout and shotgun mods can obviously be changed to your preferred gun type. And with that, you can change your class item's element or have multiple class items of multiple elements to match the type of gun you're using to use the correct charge with light mod. For example, I use precision charge, which gives your scout rifles, hand cannons, and bows an extra chance of getting charged with light from getting those precision headshot kills. If you're using an auto rifle, switch it to solar. And in the particular instance you would be using solar, I would also recommend use bomber instead of perpetuation, as bomber helps you get grenade energy from just using your barricade. And coupled with that, you also have a pretty strong charge with light, with high energy fire taking charge and stacks on stacks being your standard set and with that charge harvester just giving your kills and assists an extra chance of charge of light and precision charge as i mentioned before so you have a lot of different opportunities to get charge of light you should have it pretty much all the time for the stat distribution that i would recommend as always in pvp you're going to want to have a very high recovery close to tier 10 as possible with this obviously a high discipline eight plus for the grenade recharge time and surprisingly enough, a medium level resilience, anywhere from 5 to 7 for breaking out of stasis faster. As stasis is very common these days, you're going to need a pretty big counter to it. Mobility is usually a very useful thing to have, but in this particular build can be sacrificed as your slide, melee, super, dune marchers, and lightweight weapons can compensate for your lack of speed. And finally, strength and intellect are not really that useful and can be mostly ignored. Moving on, let's talk about gameplay, because the way you use this build is often just as important as how you build it. To reiterate, this is an aggressive build based on using your superior slide to shatter your wall grenades and speed around the battlefield. Again, it's a very simple premise, but it's very easy to pull off and does a lot of damage in a decent area. So when you see an enemy at a choke point, block their path with your wall grenade and just slide through the wall. The shatter damage will kill multiple full health guardians around you, and on top of that, breaking those stasis crystals improves your grenade regeneration and doesn't use charge with light. And there you can see the cycle. You throw your grenade, you slide through it, kill everybody around you, and you get more grenade regeneration. To explain more on the aspects and fragments, the two aspects you're using are going to be the superior slide and the melee energy from shattering stasis crystals. 
For the Chosen Fragments, Hedrons gives you bonus weapon damage from freezing enemies, which couples really nicely with the Charge of Life. Shards boosts your grenade recharge from shattering those stasis crystals, as mentioned before. And finally, Fissures increases the damage and radius of shatter damage after killing a frozen target or breaking a stasis crystal. So, as you slide through those stasis crystals, the first one gives you that bonus for the rest of them to get more damage and more radius. For the rest of your subclass, your super is honestly one of the worst supers in the game because of its long animation locks and bad targeting for hits. In my opinion, the best way to use it is to use your light attack for approach and then heavy attack cancel that light attack to freeze everyone in front of you. And then follow that up with another heavy attack to finish them off or use your light attack plus dune marcher static for less super use. Your grenade is obviously going to be used for slide shatter kills and blocking off enemy sight lines. Your melee is more often used as a fast dodge in any direction. It really helps when you're getting frozen by that dome grenade to just get out of there. And finally, your barricade is used pretty normally as a defensive barrier for peeking and retreat. Next up for your weapons, your primary weapon, Mida Multi-Tool, is used in mid to mid-long range. is an excellent primary use weapon for its superior speed, range, and radar always being active. And if you stack up the Hedrons plus high energy fire damage, you're gonna get a lot faster kill. Your special weapon, Felwinter's Lie, gets a lot of benefit from your superior slide, allowing you to approach very quickly, and it's very strong in this current meta where snipers have been nerfed. Your Heavy, a good grenade launcher, or Interference 6, for example, is chosen for its in-between ability for ease of use and potential kill. Alternative to my other recommendations above, you may want to use something with grenade recharge like Demolitionist, Wellspring, or Traveler's Judgment. On the other side of the coin, the most common counter to this build is when people avoid your walls or destroy them first. You have to be very weary of enemy titans sliding through it or enemy hunters that can slam through them. A big reason that I recommend Mida Multi-Tool is so that you can handle enemies that camp and hold back, i.e. the people avoiding your walls. And in the last section of this video, I wanted to talk about a few alternatives alternatives, and there are a number of alternatives. Firstly, you can use many different weapon options as I outlined above. Just make sure you make the appropriate changes to your armor mods. Your subclass cannot be changed as this build is built around the subclass's ability. Your grenade can technically be changed to the Duskfield Dome Grenade, and selecting Durance Fragment in place of Fissures will help you out. And finally, your exotic is not really a critical part of this build and can be switched to many other things like One-Eyed Mask, Heart of Inmost Light, Armamentarium, Lion Rampant, a lot of different options. And there you have it. That is the build in a nutshell, the build that I like to call the Shattering Foot. It's kind of a weird build, but I think that it's pretty cool. Oh, I did I did not mean that for beat a pun. That was good. I like that one. Leave that one in. Anyways, my name is Midnight Chronic. I do hope you guys did enjoy, and I'll see you guys on the next one.